Hi, my name is Alex with Tape Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the burn down report in Jira. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. But seriously, I am trying to hit a goal of 3,000 subscribers before the end of the year, so make sure you hit that subscribe button because it's free, there's no effort for you, and all you got to do is click. Now, let's jump into the video. You only get the burn down report if you are in a scrum based project. So we're going to try to address those first. If you go to a company managed software project, you're going to have reports regardless of your board type. So if you have either the scrum where you have the backlog and the actor sprints, or if you have a Kanban where you don't necessarily have a scrum, but you're still going to have reports. So anyways, I'm going to essentially close the sprint here just so you can kind of see what happens. I'm just going to complete the sprint here. This automatically takes us to the reports. So you can either get to the reports by closing an active sprint, which is customary for you to do at the end of the sprint, or you can actually just click on reports and it's going to take you to the reports. Now, another little tip for you is you can actually change the board here. You don't have to go back to the project and then select like a different board. Okay. And with that, a second tip is each board will have its own unique set of reports. So that means that if you have a Jira project that has multiple boards in it, don't expect to see an aggregated uh, report. You're going to see a report per board and then per sprint. So given that, this is probably the most important report you'll see. This, in my opinion, is the most value added report because this report can actually help you. It gives you a lot of insight. It helps you steer the ship because it gives you a real time, near real time analysis and view of where your team is going and how they're performing. Okay. So if you're not using the burndown report, I highly recommend you consider using it because it's, again, it's one of those most powerful ones that are actually valuable to every scrum master. All right. And so just kind of walking you through the interface of what you're seeing here, as you can see here at the top, you're going to have a, how to read this chart. So you can actually like, it just gives you a, a high level overview of what this is. And you can actually just hide this if you don't want to, but in, in general, it just gives you a very, very quick synopsis of what this report is all about or chart. Okay. So if you come down a little bit more, you'll see that this is where you can select your sprint. So you can actually toggle this and go to, the latest sprint, and then you can also change the measurement. You can change what you are seeing. And so typically by default, if you're in a scrum based project doing scrum, hopefully fingers crossed, you're using story points. And so that's, it's going to default to the story points, but for whatever reason, if you're not using story points, you can use a, a different numerical field. The only other one I would personally recommend though, is that you use issue count or let me see if it's in here, original time estimate. So those are the three fields that I would recommend you leverage in this report. So the, either the story points, which is again, the default, the most value added one, the original estimate, if you're doing hours, not recommended in scrum, but some teams like to do it. And then if you're not using anything, if you're not using any unit of measurement, my next recommendation is that you use issue count because at least the issue count is going to give you something to look at and something that's hopefully beneficial. Okay. So, but for now, we're going to leave it at just story points because that's the default. And that's the one I would recommend that you look at if possible. Again, if you're if it's not possible, you have a couple of options, but I would urge you, I would recommend that you figure out how to get your team, how to get your ducks in a row so that you can see this kind of report here. Okay. The burn down. What's the burn down telling us? All right. And so the burn down is telling us a couple of different things. One, you're going to notice that there's a gray line that goes from the top of the screen to the bottom. And if I change between one sprint to the other, you'll see that this line kind of changes. It just depends on how long your sprint is. This particular sprint three that I have was a sprint that I left open for a very long time, as you can see from August through November. So it scaled out really bad. So I'm not going to use it for my example. So I'm going to just use sprint two, which is a more traditional two week sprint. So what you're seeing with this gray bar is that's the target. 
That's what Atlassian is given to you as a guide. That is what your team should be hoping to hit. You don't have to follow that line exactly. But what I tell teams is you want to hug it. You want to get as close to as possible to that line and try to be as consistent as possible with that line. Now, nothing's going to happen if you don't follow it. Nothing's going to happen if you're way over or way below. But in general, a healthy sprint is going to be executed in a very healthy way if you hug this gray line. So that's that gray line. That's what that basically what that's for. The next one that you're going to see is this red line. And so this red line actually represents the story points that you committed to. And so when you start sprint in Jira, so if you, I'm going to go back out for a little bit. So if you go to your backlog, when you hit this start sprint button, what Jira is going to do is it's actually going to aggregate the sum of all of the story point values here. As you can see, this one only has a five, but it's going to aggregate them all up for you. And it does show it to you in the bottom here before you even start the sprint. But once you hit the start button, that will actually set the high point of where that red line is going to start. So it's primarily going to start wherever or the, based on the summation of all those story points. So if you if you have 100 points in your sprint planned, then it's going to start at 100. So this number is going to be 100. And so then the name of the game over the next two weeks is for your team to naturally close out work day to day in such a way that it kind of mimics or follows that gray line as close as possible. That's the objective. I will tell you, I've probably been in 300 sprints by now. That doesn't always happen. That's not always the case. So I'm going to kind of give you some tips and tricks as to how to kind of get better. But just know that that red line is going to start at the top. And hopefully, again, double fingers crossed, by the time two weeks later passes, you get down all the way to the bottom or as close as possible. Now, depending on where you've taken some of your agile training, some folks will recommend that shooting for 100% completion is not a feasible goal. I personally recommend that you shoot for 80%. So if you sign up for 100 points, your team should be able to finish at least 80, 85 points on a good sprint. And if your team is under, if your team's like signing up for 100 and they're only knocking out 50, then you have to have a conversation with your team because they're clearly missing that objective. And other things to look for as you're looking at this chart is it's a burn down chart, right? You want to burn down. And so things that are huge red flags is if this burn down, if that red line is going flat, it's kind of like just a, just a flat line across, right? And you, you see this here and this is uh, sprint three. If you see this phenomenon happening here, this is some really bad news because this is essentially telling you that your team is stagnant. They're not closing any work. They're not actually completing anything. And so this is a conversation that if you're a scrum master, you want to be having this conversation with your developers and finding out what's going on. Why, why are things not being closed out? Now I do want to give you a little tip here as to what constitutes closing something out because you would be surprised. The issue doesn't have to be resolved and the issue doesn't even need to be in a done status for it to give you credit for it to take the dip, right? And so what Jira is doing, and again, this is the stuff that you only learn here, what Jira is doing behind the scenes is, so when you're looking at the columns from your sprint, whatever is in the farthest most right column, if your issue, your story, your task, your bug, whatever you're working on, if it actually makes it to that done column, then Jira is gonna register it as a completed item from the burn down perspective and give you credit. So if something makes it all the way across, then that report is going to take a dip. It's going to do what Jira calls a burn down. So this is good. This is how you go from up top down, down some points, right? The intensity of which that line is going to drop is dependent on how many points got closed out in that issue. So if you, if you knocked out a 20 pointer, then it's going to go down 20 points. If you knocked down a one point, it's just going to go down once. The line's not going to go as intense, right? And so you want to, again, encourage your developers that as, as they're actually using Jira and they're doing their work, that they're actually closing out their stuff. They're making it move all the way to the right so that you get the credit. Now, where this can be problematic is 
if your team has a process where like your product owner has to review everything before you move it to done, or maybe you have to go through like QA or UAT, this can introduce all kinds of nightmares because you're basically artificially creating these flat lines in your process, which kind of defeat the whole purpose of Scrum. In general, you should modify your process so that it does follow the line a little bit better. If you're waiting for that product owner to review and they're waiting until the end of the sprint, you can accelerate that. You can pull that into the left and have your product owner review on demand as stories are closed. If you have your QA process and they're a bottleneck, maybe you kick them out or maybe you accelerate them and tell them get their gear in actions here so that you can completely uh, close things up as they're being closed. Other thing to watch out for is if you see that your sprint starts at zero, that means that you as a scrum master did a pretty grave mistake. This means that you actually started the sprint without putting work into it, or at least without putting story points. So it'll be zero. Another thing for you to watch out for is a spike. If the red line all of a sudden instead of going down goes up, that basically means that you're adding scope, which is a big, the biggest no, no in Jira. You don't like, it's okay to add scope every once in a while, but it's like almost sacrilegious to add scope. And this is like the biggest cardinal sin here. Like you don't want to be doing this. Like whenever you can avoid introducing or increasing your scope, you want to not do that. Okay. So again, this chart is going to visualize. And the best part about this is your team can't fake it. I've been in so many teams where they make PowerPoint reports, where they have to report out the progress of the team and they can fudge all the numbers around because it's PowerPoint and you can put whatever you want. But here it is live. It is actually grabbing the data from Jira and generating this report. So there's nothing to, to fake here. Your team's performance or actual real performance is what's on display and what's, what's ultimately here for, for everyone to see. So another great reason why you should absolutely stick around in this tool, because again, you can't fake this stuff. All right. The last thing that we're going to do is if you actually keep scrolling beyond this little graphic that we probably spent way too much time talking about, you will see what's probably my favorite part of this whole thing. And you kind of see like a synopsis, but it's not really a synopsis. It's like, I don't even know how to explain it, but it's in, in Spanish. We have this word chisme, <laughs> which means like gossip, right? But it's not gossip. I think has a more negative connotation than it does in Spanish because chisme is actually kind of cool. Sometimes it doesn't have to always be like bad stuff. So anyways, this will give you the 411. This is telling you everything that happened in your sprint live up to that point. So if you come in here two days after you start your sprint, it'll give you the synapses up to that point. If you wait till the end of the sprint, it'll give you all the cheese from all the different days. And so this is kind of a, a cool data to have because sometimes what you'll find out is that some team members try to kind of, I don't know, massage the truth a little bit. And this will not let you do that. This will basically tell you the truth. Jira, I have a famous saying that I love to say, Jira never lies. And this is where Jira, where you're going to get your facts and data. So this chart here is basically telling you when you started your sprint, here's what was in scope. Here's the event that kicked it off, starting the sprint. And then we're going to have the number of points that we went into with the start of 22 points. So you can't fake this up, right? And sometimes it's kind of hard to see how many points this is because it's somewhere between 20 and 25. If you want to know, just go down here. It'll tell you. Next are the events. So every time that you actually move a story to done, it'll give you a burn down. It'll also tell you that the issue is completed. And remember, this is done every time you move it to that farthest, most right column. Every time that you add something to your sprint, and specifically every time that you add something to an active sprint, which means that you've already started the sprint, anytime that you do that, you're going to get what's called an, a scope change, which is again, a big no-no in my book. And it's going to tell you issues added to the sprint. Now, watch out for this because this is actually a pretty sneaky way to add scope to the sprint without like trying to be covert. Because if whoever's doing it didn't actually put story points, then Jira will give you the scope change, but it's still going to flatline because it didn't really actually add the issues, right? And so we actually go and look at this. You see how this goes up and down and, it, and it's just flat the rest of the time. If I switch over to issue count, this graph looks different because it'll tell me that I started off with five issues and then I burned down three. So I came down from five to two, a couple of days passed and then I increased, I added one issue. So you see that here on August 16th, I added one issue. And then you see that all the way into October 25th, which happens way the heck over here, we added three issues 
And so you can see that. So from here, we went from two all the way back up to five. And so now we're back at that level. So this view here will kind of give you a better representation of what's actually happening. Again, it, it's it's really cool. In my opinion, I like it because it's telling me every in, in and every out. And if there's ever any a question of like doubt or confusion or if you think somebody's not like telling the truth type of thing, you can always come to your burn down chart and essentially figure out what the heck happened. And then the final thing is your sprint ended, right? So this one I like really a lot too because sometimes in Jira, you can have multiple people have the power to close the sprint. And sometimes accidents happen and you prematurely close the sprint. And this chart here will tell you who's the culprit, who actually closed the sprint. That is a really cool thing. Again, if you want to kind of figure out what happened, what's going on, what didn't get done and stuff like that. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please make sure you're subscribed. If you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, just hit that red button. It's super easy, super free, no effort to you. And it helps out the channel tremendously. We're trying to hit 3000 subscribers here. So please, please, please make sure you hit that subscribe button right now if you haven't done it already. And if you did get value out of this video that you just watched, make sure you drop a like because that helps out the algorithm tremendously. It helps Jira be known to more people and it just helps more people watch these videos. So make sure you hit that thumbs up. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, if you just want to say hi and interact in the comment section, feel free to leave a comment. I do read and respond to every single comment. So if you have any questions, anything that you want to just discuss, or even if you just want to say hello to help out that algorithm, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now